In this video, we're going to go over simple machines. Simple machines are devices that can amplify a force. There are a lot of situations where there's a task that we need to complete, but the force required is so large that it's not practical. For instance, consider lifting a 400 pound box. Right, there's a few people out there that's strong enough to lift that weight, but for the most part, that's not doable for most people. However, if you apply a simple machine, you can actually be able to have a situation where the force required to lift that 400 pound box is much more reasonable. All right, so to understand how simple machines work, let's consider the task of lifting a mass M onto a shelf of height H. And we're gonna consider three different situations. The first situation A is without a simple machine, just lifting the mass straight up. B and C are with two different simple machines. One is a frictionless inclined plane, and the other is a frictionless pulley system. And for each of these three situations, I want to answer the following questions. What is the minimum input force required? And how much work is done? All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the first case, A. So in A, there is no simple machine. So we're just going to use our brute force and just lift this box straight up. Now, the force that we have to apply to lift this box essentially has to balance out gravity, right? The reason why this box doesn't just float up in the air is because gravity is present. So we need to exert a force that can balance out gravity. So that would be the minimum input force that we need. So the minimum, force that we need is simply gravity, which is mg. Now, technically, you need something just slightly greater than mg, right? Because if the forces are the same, then the net force is zero and nothing moves. But for the MCAT, they won't test you on those minor details, right? mg is essentially good to lift this box up. All right. So the next thing we want to consider is how much work is done, right? So that was number one, minimum force applied. Number two, the work done is FD cosine theta. In this case, the force is mg. The displacement is h, right? We're lifting a box a height h. And the angle of cosine, well, the force applied is straight up. That's the force we're applying. Displacement is also straight up. So they're in the same direction. So this is zero. So the work done is mgh because cosine of zero is one. All right. So this is our baseline case. Without a simple machine, we need to apply a force of mg and we need to do mgh of work to get this task done. So now let's consider the second situation, b. So in B, we're using a frictionless inclined plane as our simple machine. So first part, the minimum force necessary to accomplish this task. Well, in this case, instead of just lifting the box straight up, we're going to push it up an incline and we're gonna push it up an incline such that it reaches a height of H at the top. So the force that we need to apply doesn't have to cancel out with all of gravity. And that's because on an inclined plane, gravity points straight down, but our applied force is not in the opposite direction of gravity. Here you can break gravity into a perpendicular component and a parallel component to the inclined plane. Right, right here is the perpendicular component and right here is the parallel component. And here we only need to oppose the parallel component, right? The parallel component wants the box to slide down. So we just need to apply a force to counter that parallel component of gravity. Now on this inclined plane, theta is this angle right here in this triangle. So the parallel component of gravity is gonna be mg sine theta which in this case, theta is 30 degrees, so the parallel component of gravity is going to be mg sine 30. So this is the minimum force that we need to apply, and 
mg sine 30, since 30 is one half, that means we need to apply a force of mg over two. And here, we can start to see the advantages of simple machines, right? Before, without a simple machine, the force you need to apply is the weight of the box. With an inclined plane with an angle of incline of 30 degrees, we now only require half that force, right? And that's pretty significant, right? A 400 pound box is a lot. 200 pound, while well, still being a lot, is substantially less. Okay. So we can see simple machines reduce the amount of force necessary, again, because they amplify the force. And number two, we want to calculate the work done. Work is F D cosine theta. The force we're gonna apply is right here, mg over two. The displacement, again, we have to be careful. This is an inclined plane. It's not just moving a high h. It's moving the distance of the hypotenuse. So again, we have to do a little bit of trigonometry here. So we want to calculate what is the displacement, All right? So let's go ahead and label the displacement right here in green, All right? This is the displacement that we want to calculate. And we can do trig sine of 30 is equal to H over D. So if we rearrange, we can solve for D. That D is going to be equal to H over sine 30. And then we need to multiply by cosine theta. Now theta here is not the angle of the incline. Theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. In this case, we're applying a force that is parallel and up the incline. That's the same direction as displacement. So in this case, it's going to be cosine of zero degrees. And here, what you can note is that sine of 30 is a half. So h over one half is actually 2h, which is pretty notable because it means that when you're using an inclined plane with a 30 degree angle, in order to move up a distance of or a height of h, the displacement across the incline is 2h you have doubled the displacement. So this is going to leave us with work equals mg over two times two h times one, which actually leaves us with mgh. The amount of work has not changed, right? And this is pretty interesting because with a simple machine, we need less force, but the same amount of work is done. And the way it works is that Simple machines reduce the amount of force required to accomplish a task, but they increase the distance over which you have to apply the force. So in the end, the amount of work done does not change. Okay, so knowing that information, let's take a look at our last case, C. So in C, we're going to have a frictionless pulley system. So again, we want to start by figuring out what is the minimum force applied necessary. So here, with the pulley, we're going to pull down on this string or rope right here. And when we pull down, this mass can attach to these pulleys is going to rise up. Now, when you pull on the string, you produce tension in the rope. The tension is throughout all the different strings in the rope. So all you need to calculate is how, how many of these strings is helping to lift your mass. And in this case, this mass is connected by these two pulleys. Each pulley is being held up by two strings. So that means there are a total of four strings that are helping to hold up our pulley. And all of these tensions are created by the force applied, all right? So the tension is the force applied. And if you think about it, to lift this up, now we have four tension forces that are balancing out the weight of the box, the gravitational force. So four tension forces are balancing out gravity. So that means the tension force that needs to be applied is only one fourth the weight of the box. 
and the tension force is the force applied. So the minimum force necessary here is one fourth mg. Again, this is pretty substantial. Instead of having to lift a 400 pound box, now you only need to exert a force equivalent to lifting a 100 pound box. That's a big reduction. But the second part, we already know the answer to. We know that simple machines reduce the amount of force necessary to accomplish a task, but they do not affect the work done. So the work done is still going to be MGH, and it stays the same because we know the displacement is going to increase. So in order for the displacement force to multiply to give us this work, the displacement has to be 4H. So the way we can think about simple machines is that simple machines reduce the amount of force necessary to accomplish a task but increase the distance over which that force has to be applied. So the result is that the work done does not change. All right, so this means that if your simple machine reduces the amount of force required to lift your object by a factor of five, then the distance over which you have to apply that force increases by that same factor of five. But the total amount of work done does not change. All right, so there's one more topic that we need to discuss with simple machines, and that's mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is essentially a measure of how efficient our simple machines are. So we can say that it is equal to a measure of how much a simple machine amplifies the force. And there's an equation for mechanical advantage. It's equal to MA is equal to the output force divided by the input force. Or since if you reduce the amount of force necessary, you increase the displacement by the same amount, you can also calculate it as the input displacement divided by the output displacement. Both of these equations will give you the same result for the mechanical advantage. So to see how this works, we can apply this equation to the three cases that we just discussed. So in A, if we want to calculate the mechanical advantage, well, the output force that we achieved was just the force we applied, all right? So the output force is simply the same as what we applied so it's mg over mg, which is one, all right? So this makes sense. There's no simple machine. There's no amplification whatsoever. Let's take a look at B. With B, in terms of the output force, output force was ultimately we lifted the box, all right? So the output force is the weight of the box, mg. The input force is what we actually had to apply. We didn't have to apply mg of force, we only had to apply half of that, all right? mg over two. When you take mg divided by mg over two, you're going to end up with a value of two. So this has a mechanical advantage of two. It means that whatever force we apply, the simple machine will double that force in the output. So finally, if we look at C, Again, lifting the box, the output force is mg. 
but the force we had to apply was only one fourth of that, mg over four. So the mechanical advantage here is four. It increases the output force by a factor of four, but it also increases the distance that we have to apply the force over a distance of four times the actual height that the box moves. Okay, so that's how simple machines work as well as mechanical advantage.